Hey folks, Quill18 here and welcome to Let's Try Star Drive. Star Drive is a really promising indie 4X game. 4X stands for uh, Expand, Explore, um, Exfoliate, and Xylophone. So it is a, a space-based empire building game and uh, very much, very, very much a spiritual successor to sort of Master of Orion, which is one of my favorite games of all time. But also in many ways, I find it... Um, kind of maybe like a lightweight version of Distant Worlds. Distant World is one of those games where I still desperately need to make a Let's Play for. Um, and the problem with it is that other game, Let Distant World, is potentially a little overwrought, and it's certainly very expensive if you want to get all the add-ons. Star Drive is considerably more accessible and affordable. Um, on the other hand, Star Drive is currently still in beta development. This is a pre-release version. You can buy it now on Steam and have access to the beta. But uh, it's not quite, not everything is quite there. In particular, I think the UI needs a, a dramatic kind of uh, improvement, and apparently they are working on it. The official release date is the end of April, so as of this time, they've got a little over a month to kind of work on that in those tweaks. Anyway, without further ado, let's get started by clicking on New Game. Uh oh. I was going to say, there we go. I had it sitting idle for a little while. I think Fraps might be screwing it up a little. Hopefully, it goes okay. So, like in many of these 4X games, there's a fairly wide selection of races to choose from. We've got the Cordrazine, it's the Cordrazine Collective, and they're going to be really interesting when we see them in-game, because they seem to mind-control these little sort of owl-ewok things. I don't know, it's strange. Um, we've got the Draylocks, the humans, human. The uh, Kolrothi, who, A, sound a lot like Bullrothi, which was a race of bear space bears from master of ryan and these are also space bears japanese space bears uh we've got the opterus which seem to be some sort of robotic bug race we've got the polyps which are plant-based we've got the rally rally which may or may not be disciples of some distant elder god i'm not sure and we've got the vulfar who appear to be kind of werewolfy type things i'm not sure it's actually a little hard to tell Oh, what's interesting is that all the descriptions of the races here are procedurally generated. Well, procedurally generated. They're based on what stats you've taken. And as with many great 4X games, you can choose any of these races to use as your picture, and then you can customize them any way you want. For example, the humans start off as smart, industrious, meticulous, and with a prototype flagship. Well, we could take away one of these stats if we want to research lower. No, we don't want to do that. that whoever wants to do that in a 4X game? Uh, we could take away Industrious, and then we'd have three points left to spend, and then turn around and put it on Mercantile instead, if we would prefer. You can also take negative states, we could, uh, stats. We can take Mercantile and Lazy, and then you know, start to unlock more and more things. Uh, we'll also be Corrupt, and... Uh, oh, apparently we can't take any more negatives. Really? Well, that's interesting. Can you only take one negative trait? No. Can you only take one negative trait in each category? No. Oh, I can't take corrupt because meticulous and corrupt are um, mutually exclusive. There, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Um, anyway, I, uh, I'm going to take the humans this time around simply because the other races, I like the way they talk. I thought they, the game developers made a really interesting decision in that all of these people approach diplomacy with sort of their own kind of voice, uh, their own way of speaking, and I want to highlight that. Um, and in terms of fine-tuning this, you know, I'm quite happy with leaving the default smart, industrious, meticulous, and prototype flagship. Uh, I like that there's a fair range of different things in here, and some of them are quite different. They're not a straight-up sort of modifier that you would think in a, in a standard way, a standard bonus and malice. For example, pack mentality, I think, is really interesting in that um, races with a pack mentality receive a 25% damage penalty to all ship weapons. However, they receive a 5% bonus to damage, up to 50% for each nearby friendly ship. So as long as you go around in packs of, well, at least five, the damage, the, the penalty cancels out, and if you go all the way up to a pack of 10, then everyone's got a 50% damage bonus. And that is pretty freaking impressive. Um, I, uh, assuming I did that right. Depends on, uh, depends on how these stack up. You might have to go up to a pack of 15 to get the full 50% bonus, now that I think about it. Um, yeah, that makes... 
That's interesting. I, I think at 5 you break even, at 10 I guess you'd be at a plus 25%, and then hopefully you can go all the way up to a 15 and get a, a net bonus of up to 50%, but I'm not sure. It might just be a 25% swing, caps out at 10. Uh, it's actually a little... huh. It's not clear. Um, so yeah, that was the example. Things are a little bit different. There's also the, the huge homeworld, small homeworld thing, so you can modify your actual starting situation there, which is which is pretty cool. Anyway, that is it. So again, I'm going to take humans. Normally I don't play as the humans, but it is kind of... I, I Just to show off the other races. Um, we can change our empire name, so we're going to be the United Federation. We'll, uh, we'll change that to... Um, we'll change that to the, the Internet... The Internet Collective. Oh, there's already a collective in here. Um, the Internet Fanboys. Human, humans, start and soul, we can change our flag, we can change our color. Oh, there we go. So we are going to start as, uh, you know what, I'll start as bright green, just because it should stand out really nicely on the, uh, on the world map. Uh, we can change the galaxy size from tiny all the way to epic. I'm going to leave it on medium to start off with. Again, we're just going to be showing off the game for a short session here, not a full game. Uh, solar systems, normal, abundant, crowded, rare. So... A, the size of the galaxy, B, how spread out the galaxy is. So you could go with an epic-sized galaxy, but really rare solar systems, and then it would just be huge amounts of space in between everything, and it would slow down expansion dramatically. How many opponents? The game mode, currently sandbox is the only option, and to win in sandbox mode, basically everyone else has to be gone. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean just defeating them, because you can form a federation with another species and unite together, and basically, it effectively, it's like they become defeated and you get all their stuff, is, is kind of the way the, the game is going to implement it. Uh, but it does mean that you can, uh, you can win through pure diplomacy, which is kind of cool. Uh, the pacing, which will change the research and construction time. So you can slow things down dramatically, if that's, again, what you're looking for. And the difficulty, which ranges from brutal to easy. So it looks like normal, so there's four difficulty settings. So I'm going to stay on normal for now, and that's it. There is a rule option here that we can change as well to change the, um, the faster than light speed modifier. Um, I, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not 100% sure what it does, but there you go. Again, it is still in beta as well, so there could be a lot more options. It's, it, if nothing else, the fact that they have a game mode here, even though we can't change it now, certainly implies that there will be multiple game modes, maybe multiple victory modes as they go forward. Uh, I'm really excited for this game. I think it's got a lot of potential, assuming, they can, uh, assuming they're really you know, working on everything the way that they, uh, they seem to imply they will. So we're going to engage. And click to continue. Apparently we can capture ships with boarding parties. That's really cool. And here we are. Now, this is a real-time 4X game. And that does seem to be quite quite the trend these days, is to do the real-time thing for these strategy games as much as possible. And it makes me a little bit sad, because I, I quite like turn-based games. Uh, one of the things I find in these real-time games is when you get later in the game, and you've got big combats going on, it can be really difficult to track everything that's going on. Uh, so I find myself pausing quite frequently, and you can pause and unpause by hitting space. Uh, in these kinds of games, I find myself pausing quite often and double-checking all my units, make sure no one's sitting idle, no one's in trouble. And um, it's, it's not... It's not great. Luckily, there is a high degree of automation that you can turn on in this game, uh, which should eliminate some of that tedium, which makes me really happy. But I do like turn-based games where, you know, every turn, everyone who needs an action, you can just cycle through them all, so you know that you've never missed anyone. So here's the galaxy view down here in the mini-map. We can click around to move around that way. We can also middle-click to move in the view here, which I find kind of odd, and there's no ability to sort of uh, drag my view around, which I find a little bizarre. Uh, I can't I can move around with the arrow keys, but I find it a little bit slow. So, you know, a couple little things in the UI that I, I hope they change. This, this is quite good. Um, and yet we are bright green, so there we are at Seoul. What's really interesting is the Seoul system in this game apparently always has Mercury, Venus, uh, Earth, Mars, there's Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and... Wait, is there no Neptune? There's no Neptune. And of course there's no Pluto. Because Pluto is not a planet. <clears throat> um, right, so, standard view. Very typical, but, you know, I do like the multiple zoom levels. Uh, some people have said that some of the performance 
in uh, some of these views is not great, but they are looking to improve that, so hopefully that is the case. We'll go through the different menus here. Uh, you can also change the game of simulation. Right now it's running at 1x. If you hit plus, you can go 2, 3, 4. It caps out at 4x, but in the main menu, in the options, you can turn off the speed limiter, and that'll allow you to go to a much higher multiplier if you want. Um, I suppose in the early game that might be good. I suspect that in the late game it would not be ideal. So uh, we're, we're going to take a look at the research because that's always one of the biggest things in these 4X games. So despite the fact that it's in real time, uh, there are sort of turns or ticks that happen in the game in terms of uh, creating production and especially research. So you'll see that if we were to select uh, the aerotropics, aero, aeroponics research, first of all, it takes 150 beakers. We are producing 1.4 beakers per tick. And at the current rate, it's going to take 106 turns to produce. So... I mean, again, you're not really running in turns more per se. Uh, I think the turns is the point here in the start date. So theoretically, this would be done at start date 10.10 dot or 10.11.1. Um, we'll, we'll see if that's the case. We are also going to tweak the, uh, the science rate. So I'm actually not sure how often the ticks happen. We'll keep an eye on that. I actually think that's probably not quite right. I'm betting it's something like 10 turns per decimal point here. Uh, we'll see. So there are uh, there, there's a tech tree. There are six areas of research. This feels very uh, civilization or somewhat Master of Orion-ish. Not exactly. I guess it's more civilization because Master of Orion doesn't have a tech tree exactly. It has various tech levels, and then you choose individual techs in each level. Here you can unlock every single tech in the game if you really want to. Uh, the different texts unlock different things. If you mouse over the technology itself, it gives you a description, but in and of itself, it doesn't give you anything here. Instead, what it will do is it will unlock the rover bay, which is a building that I can build on my colonies, which gives a plus one production bonus, and also a warehouse, which is another building that I can open up on my colony. Some things, especially uh, these, these star icons here, is just a generic kind of bonus. So this will make all my ships move 20% faster which is pretty awesome. It does have the research queue here. I do find it a little odd that the research queue is like by default kind of hidden. Uh, the first thing you click on will become the current research and if you click, keep clicking on things, it will queue up. It will also do a queue if you click on something uh, further down. It'll queue everything up in order, which is certainly reasonable. I believe, oh no, there's no need to shift click anything because what you can do is just, uh, you just click, 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 and each click queues something up. So we've got the colonization category, which mostly makes your colonies more productive. I believe some of these techs will also unlock different planet types. Um, oh, apparently you can uh, you can right click on these things and get more information. I had not realized that. I was only using the mouse over. This is actually incredibly handy. Uh, terraformers, very cool. Oops, I accidentally clicked out of that. Uh, rapid cloning. Uh, under energy, uh, you've got some weapons, for example, energy weapons here, but also better fuel cells, shields. If you go down into space weapons, then you can get missiles, you can get various ballistic weapons, and they're quite cool. They actually look really great in the game. Again, the, the real-time aspect of it does mean that these things look really cool, and you don't have to switch to any sort of like secondary battle screen to actually see the action. Uh, by, at the start of the game, we can only build things with a basic kind of fighter hull, very simple sort of little small shuttles that can't do much. Um, and to unlock bigger hulls, you have to research them. So heavy fighter hull, frigate, cruiser, battleship, and finally, a Titan-sized hull. So uh, I haven't actually progressed far enough the game to really see these things, but we're going to look at how the spaceship construction goes in just a second, because one of the most exciting things, of course, is being able to design your own spaceships, which is a staple in 4X space games, and uh, this one does it pretty well. The UI for it is a little wonky, but um, I really think it has a huge amount of potential. Um, so anyway, that's that's a general look at the uh, tech tree. We'll just queue up uh, industrial foundations to give our new colonies a, a plus one production boost. I think that's that's probably fine. Uh, the next thing we've got is our ec econo economic overview. Uh, it doesn't seem to be much you can do here, <clears throat> excuse me, except affect the tax rate. You can go up, make a lot more money, or put it down. Uh, I haven't seen what effect the tax rate has on morale or anything like that yet, so I'm not sure what the uh, what the incentive incentive is to keep it low. I suppose I could put it at 100% and see exactly what happens, but we'll keep it at 25% for now. 
Next up, the shipyard. So this is where we actually design ships. Currently, we only have three hull types unlocked. Again, we have the, the shuttle hull, which is for fighters and things. Um, this is what we're looking at here. It's pretty puny. There's not a whole lot of space. We've got freighters, which are considerably bigger. Uh, but um, can they hold weapons? Apparently, they can. Oh, okay, these weapons are, are big. Oh, that's the flak cannon, right. And then you've got point defense guns. Um, huh. That's really interesting. No, oh, I'm doing it. Yeah, no, there's no need to save oh, every time I switch. It's got a higher mass. I'm actually not sure. I can't right-click on it for more information either. Hmm. Uh, you can't. I believe you can mount weapons and defenses on these because they will defend themselves from attackers uh, while they're doing their transport duty back and forth. So um, apparently, that's just something I'm going to have to take a closer look at when we go forward. There's also these platforms, which uh, cannot mount engines. They don't have room for it. So if we go to um, power engines, try to grab engines. There's no valid place. The various um, squares here, the various tiles where you can install equipment, they are coded with uh, O, I, and E. So I is internal, O is outside, so outside, inside. Some are I and O, so you can put both inside and outside components in those slots. And um, some are marked E, which is where the actual engines are installed. So that's a... Uh, I really don't know what the deal with the freighter is, so we'll have to check that out at some point. So you do have some ship designs built in that uh, get set up for you automatically. You can also load designs. You can save designs and, and use them for later. Right now, we've got, if we click load, it still only shows me the things that I have the ability to build right now based on my tech tree. So you're not going to see a huge bloated list, which is rather handy. Uh, if I click save as... Oh, because it's invalid, it won't let me do it. That's too bad. I was going to say, if I see, click Save As, you would actually see the big list of all the ships that uh, exist in the library, uh, although we wouldn't be able to load them up. So that is that. We're, uh, we can go to the actual exit ship list. So these are ships that I currently have and own. So if we zoom into our view over here near Earth, we should be able to actually see them. Again, you can zoom in really, really well. Here's Earth, and there is a star base orbiting Earth which unlocks, uh, I believe, greater trade and also gives us the ability to build ships. Um, we have, actually, let's start with this little guy right now. We have our little unarmed scout, which has been built by default for us. It has three sort of supply stats here. It has actual power supply and power capacity. When it runs out of juice, they don't move very quickly. But most of these vessels, and I think if I hit tab, no, if I hit this, Oh, that just shows me the picture of the ship. And this shows me the component view. Green means the components are intact. But they can take damage. In fact, that's, that's how the damage goes. Th these ships don't really have... Um, they don't have hit points, that I can tell. Uh, I don't think these are hit points. I think this is... This is versus boarding value. Yeah, defense versus boarding. Other than that, there's no real hit points. What happens is when the vessels get hit... The damage is actually directional. If a bullet comes from here and hits the vessel on the left-hand side, it'll take damage to one of the components on the left-hand side based on actual positioning. So when you design your ship, you can build things in a sort of a reasonable and sane way to try to protect various components. And eventually the ships will blow up, presumably if they get hit maybe in the engines, the power cells, uh, that sort of thing. In fact, later on, one of the things you can research is, a, uh, is an armored power cell to make it less likely that your ship's going to explode from getting the fuel tanks hit. So um, so that is the power situation, and again, with the, the fuel cells and fuel generators and things, this will recharge itself. And in practice, the, uh, the amount of fuel that is used to go faster than light is based on the mass of the ship, and these little light ships can generally go forever without worrying about refueling. So that, I love that aspect of it, because scouts can stay useful throughout the entire game, uh, and even fighter class ships with actual guns later on can stay useful throughout the game because they can be a real rapid response team, they can be a long distance strike team, presumably. I mean, I haven't played this game into the late game, so I don't know all the in-depth strategies that are actually going to be more or less useful. But, you know, there's, there's always a possibility there that they might stay handy. Plus, later on, you can build um, fighter bays into your bigger ships, so you can always use 
actual offensive fighters. The other things that are available here is the total power of all the ship's shields. We have no shields. We actually have no shields research, so that's definitely zero right now. Uh, and also the ship's current stores of ordnance and its maximum ordnance capacity. So different weapons need different amounts of ordnance. I believe energy weapons don't need ordnance at all. However, they do feed off your power. So that's when you're designing your ships, you're going to have to sort of balance these, uh, these needs out. Um, based on whether you have to worry about ammo or not. So that's kind of interesting. We've got some commands here. We're going to look at that in just a second. We are going to take this scout, and what's its job right now? Right now it is just currently orbiting Earth. If I were to unpause the game, it would just be doing that, circling Earth over and over. But we can hit these commands here and order the ship to explore the galaxy, order the ship to engage in automatic empire defense. It will hunt down any uh, enemies that are in our territories and kill them and order the ship to go back to the nearest shipyard for resupply and repair. Uh, there's also a hotkey when you have this selected. You can hit Q and you'll get this pop-up menu. We're going to look at Assume Control in just a second. You can get uh, the orders there, which include Go Exploring and Empire Defense. And, whoops, I hit the wrong key. And under Other, you can refit it to a different ship model, or you can order it to be scrapped. So we're going to take this guy, and we're just going to tell him to go ahead and explore the galaxy. So it says exploring the galaxy, and if I unpause it for a tick, there we go, you'll actually see... Oh, it doesn't show up on the, the area out here anymore. Well, that's too bad. Um, but there he goes off. There we are. So he's going to this solar system to explore the solar system. Right now it's just a dot, but as soon as he reaches there, we will get some information as to the... Uh, the planets that are here. There we go. So they've popped in. They're currently unexplored. This guy's going to go and check out each little planet and we'll get some details about it in terms of what the maximum population is. This planet, Kroner 2, is only a max popula population of 0.3. It's basically uninhabitable. It produces no food and it's not particularly mineral rich. Uh, Kroner 1 is also quite pathetic. It also has an anomaly. That's what this little swirly bit means. Um, and I haven't really explored what all these things are, although the last time I tried to colonize a planet with an anomaly, I, I discovered it had like automatic defenses set up, so they kept blowing up my colony ships. So that was unpleasant. So that was the scout ship, so it's going to be doing its thing. Meanwhile, back on Earth, we, uh, we have a colony ship. We're going to come back to this guy soon. And then we have this Perseverance ship here. Now, um, because we took the... Our, one of our racial traits was the... Uh, I don't know, special flagship type stat. We actually start with a frigate type ship here, which is which is pretty amazing. Much, much bigger than the scout. Um, normally, we would start with just a second scout, I believe, here. I believe it would still be considered our flagship, but it wouldn't be this beefy. And this certainly is beefy. It starts with pretty massive shields. It's got 4,000 shield strength here, um, which presumably is a lot. I think is a, is a lot at this stage in the game. Um, and... Uh, Oh, we can turn the shields on and off and lower the power consumption. You can see the, the amount of power it has is much, much lower than the Scout, whereas the Scout had over 1,000. This only has 140. Um, other than that, it's bigger. It's got some guns. Um, there's probably a way for us to get more details on that. Uh, and I could hit Q and I could give it some sort of job, but see, it says relinquish control, and I'll do that. I'll relinquish control. All right, I'll click it. I'll assume control. The neat thing that this game does is it actually gives you the ability to pilot a ship. Using the WASD keys, I can turn left, I can turn right, I can move forward, I can... Can I move backwards? I can move backwards. I can right-click to fire in a direction. So I've got some sort of laser beam, I've got little ballistic guns. I don't know why I can't zoom in out anymore. There we are. Um, and on my side, I've got these broadside uh, flat cannon type things. When we unlock the frigate, we're gonna, we can look at that a bit more, but yeah, these are big flat cannons, I believe. You can see with every shot, the power goes down and then comes right back up, luckily. Uh, I believe that so long as you're in your territory, which is defined by the green blob here, you will, uh, you will recharge energy, or maybe it's that warp speed doesn't take much energy. So. We're going to take our ship. The other thing we can do is we can hit F to enter warp speed, so we're going to go ahead and do that. It takes a second to charge up. I can hear the engines gearing up, and uh, apparently I didn't actually have my view zoomed in, but we are now operating at warp speed. I can turn very slowly, and in addition to shooting with the right mouse button, I can also just navigate from this view and send them to different places. And finally, I will relinquish control of this guy, 
and I will order him to just go on exploring without me. So the third thing we've got here is a colony ship, and the colony ship we can move him places and get him to do stuff. He also has room on him to uh, do some sort of freighting back and forth. He can operate as a freight ship for now if we want. But really what we want to do is get him to colonize a planet. So um, hopefully my scout has uncovered a couple of places that might be half decent by now. Uh, there's some neat symbols on the map here. In addition to anomaly, there's also uh, hostile forces in the system, and space combat is act actively happening in the system. Although I believe we will no, no longer get a view of that because the scout just left. So, which, you know, these scout ships are pretty important. You can leave them places and really get some information. So, if I click on this button over here, I can open a list of all known planets. I can sort them based on, say, max population. And I can pick a place to send people. So, we're on Earth already, obviously. Is this dangerous place Aronar? So, Aronar, we know there's, there's clearly some sort of defensive force there some sort of remnant forces perhaps, so we don't want to go there. Um, let's go to a Ku... Ku Ayat. Can I buy a consonant, please? Uh, it is mi mineral poor at point 0.9, which is a little bit unfortunate. Now, everything becomes poorer over time. Um, anything that's over a 1 will lose some of its richness over time until it gets to the point of 1. So, this place doesn't start off very good, but what the hell. Now, one of the things I don't like, actually, is on this screen here, there's nothing that I appear to be able to do. I can't right click on this to get a pop-up menu. There's no buttons. I would really like to be able to send a colony ship from here, but I can't do that. I can double click on it, get the view here. Again, I still don't have any buttons, which I think is kind of odd. But if I escape out of this view where I get the description, then here I still have the planet selected and I can click colonize. And this button's really great. If I have a colony ship, it will send that colony ship to this planet to colonize it. So right here you can see my colony ship is doing that. If I do not have one, then it will queue up a colony ship at whatever planet is sort of most appropriate to build one, which pretty much means planets uh, which don't have a lot queued up have the capability of building ships and have decent production base. Uh, I don't know if proximity plays uh, anything in that. Hopefully, ideally it would. I don't know how important or how often that comes up. So hopefully we'll settle that planet. Meanwhile, we are still scouting around, and that is lovely. Um, speaking of planets, let's take a look at Earth because we haven't actually zoomed in on Earth itself yet. So this is the view. If you have played Galactic Civilization, this sort of tile view will seem very uh, familiar. The buildings that you build actually get placed in a particular tile. For example, we have a spaceport here. We have a capital city here, which gives us a certain bonus uh, to various things. It gives us uh, a, a basic research per turn and uh, gives the planet a certain amount of combat strength. And then our spaceport gives us a tax income bonus, uh, costs us maintenance, and um, allows us to build spaceships. So that's great. Now, I don't have any other buildings that I can add right now. The one thing that seems kind of odd with this grid view is there doesn't seem to be any difference in what the various tiles do and are, except for the grayed out ones which are uninhabitable. I think we're going to need like biospheres and things like that to be, un be able to unlock these tiles so that we can build on them. Um, and I find that odd, simply because why have the tile view if it doesn't really do anything? I guess it's better than just having a number of like, oh, I'm at 2 of 25 or something like that. Um, I'm hoping that maybe they'll do the galactic civilization thing where some tiles might get bonuses to various things. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. So we've got the name of the planet. We can rename the planet. We get information about its class, its population, its fertility and richness. Uh, so fertility is... For every population that is assigned to making food, how much food will it make, right? So here I'm losing 14 food per turn because I've got 14 people. And if I bring it up to about halfway, halfway means I'll have about seven people working it and I'm breaking even on food. Well, that's because my fertility is two. So if I've got seven people working it at fertility, fertility two, that means I'm producing 14 food. So it's perfectly break even. If I produce anything more than that, then it's going to get banked in my storage. And that's actually a pretty decent thing because what we can do is flip this button over here to export. And then if we have any freighters kicking around, they will come to this planet, pick up the food, and bring it to another planet that has set to import. And it's really good. Your, your capital starts off at max population and a decent amount of uh, production. So it's going to be a great place to ship both of these things out to your colonies as you establish them. Um, the other thing here is production, so how fast you want to build things. And then finally, how much you want to research. Uh, oh, it actually changes some of the displays on here. 
Again, this thing is giving me a half a beaker of research for every colonist assigned. So if I maxed out, I would get a full seven beakers going on here. Uh, I think if nothing else at this stage, I will want to just come out slightly above break even on the food, and I probably want to go a little bit more than that later on. So I don't have any buildings. Oh, no, I just researched my tech. That is perfect timing. Oh my god, I couldn't have planned that better. Um, so we do have buildings. Great. I can place them wherever I want just by click and dragging. And maybe when there's ground combat, maybe this sort of thing will actually matter where their placement is. I suppose I haven't gotten to that, uh, that phase yet. So I can drag them there. It'll be kind of shadowed. It's going to start getting built. It needs 25 production points to, uh, to finish building that. Let's crank this up. Some, when I set to export, 25% of my production apparently will go to um, my stockpile. And then the rest will go to actually building the building. Uh, so I think it just ate some of that to do that. I can also just double click on this and it will auto place it for me and finish that off really quickly. All right, so that was easy. <laughs> we can also build ships here. So they are categorized, which is nice. So under freighters, we've got small transports and colony ships. Under scouts, currently we just have the unarmed scout. And under fighter, we have the Vulcan scout. Now, both of these actually use the same hull type. Um, but I think maybe because one is unarmed is maybe why it shows up in the scout. I don't know, because I don't think there was a class here that I could really assign it. So it probably has something to do with the fact that it's you know armed, unarmed, that sort of thing. So we could, uh, we could queue up some more scouts. Uh, because we want to explore the universe more, right? And uh, let's let's turn our beakers back up. We do have to choose a new job, so let's go ahead and uh, let's see about unlocking a bigger hull type and maybe do some production. So we've queued up a bunch of scouts. Now I'm going to pause here. Before they finish, what is going to happen is when these scouts finish, they're going to be in orbit around Earth. So then I have to go to them, I've got to select them, I've got to tell them to explore. Well, instead of doing that manually every time, what I can do is I can click on this AI button here and turn on so that my unarmed scouts will be set to auto explore when they get produced. Which is awesome, right? That I think is is great, great, great feature. Uh, we could also do that with colony ships, so if we wanted to, I could check this box, just build a bunch of colony ships, and they will decide for themselves when would be the right time to go, or what, what planets would be good to colonize. I don't think I personally like this idea. Um, well, we're going to talk about the projectors later, maybe if I remember. Uh, the automatic freighters I actually like a fair bit. Again, if I build freighters here, normally they would just sit around and orbit the Earth until I gave them a job, which would either be uh, transport colonists to a newly established colony to you know make it grow that much faster, or transport food and tools, that sort of thing. Um, I think that's probably going to feel a little bit tedious going forward, so I think turning those on to automatic is fine. Uh, you do have to specify what the ship class of the automatic freighters will be. Right now, I, there's nothing for me to click on because this is the only type of freighter that I have. Um, I think you can only have one ever be automated, but probably you're only going to be building one type later on, I think, I hope. Um, and then the auto ground attacks is actually on by default, so I'm going to leave it on. I'm not going to mess with that. That's going to be fine. Uh, the projectors. Projectors are really interesting. You've got this uh, one build menu here. You can also open this with the B key. Let's you build these subspace projector platforms. And what happens is, once you're out of the uh, the green zone, then your ships really start to burn fuel to move around. Again, the uh, it may not be a big thing with these guys because they're smaller. Uh, I'm not sure. But at warp, they will burn fuel, so they can only go so far, so fast, and then they slow down. Uh, by building the subspace projectors, you project your sort of aura of ownership and gives your, your ships a zone that they can apparently go through without really burning fuel. So they, they stay at warp longer, and they effectively stay at a much higher speed. Uh, there are random events. For example, right now we're in a hyperspace flux, which means none of my ships are moving right now. Every ship in the universe is actually uh, stalled at this time. They can't go to warp. Uh, I think if they weren't at warp, I think that if they were in a solar system, they'd still be able to move around and, and fight and do that sort of thing. We've got our event list over here, so we've unlocked you know, our technologies. That's great. Um, yeah, the, the hyperspace flux, we can't move. Uh, it tells me when it scanned a planet, when it finds anomalies, which is fine. Uh, and again, there's a few other menus here. So zoom to my currently selected flagship, which is there. I'm not sure how to assign the flagship status. I think there is a hotkey for it, um, but I'm not 100% sure. So that'll keep that kind of bookmark for you. So you can really, you can take over your, sh your ship whenever you want and really get in there. Oh, I think it is moving. It's just not moving at warp. Uh -huh. That's pretty cool. Um, next button down is zoom out to the galaxy view. All right, clear enough. Uh, that was the build menu. This is the planet list. 
this is the list of all of our ships, which I do check from time to time and double check that you know everyone is kind of doing something, everyone's got a job. Uh, again, you can't change their orders from here, which I think is is kind of odd and a failure. Again, unless you know I've I've missed something, but I don't think that you can. Uh, and I'm hoping that they they sort of modify that. I like how they've got these refit and scrap buttons, but this is actually going to be far less common than sort of just creating roles, right? And be like be able to sort. I don't know. Um, the fleet button is very cool. So this is actually going to be a really great way to organize your ships later on. So we're going to go ahead and create a fleet. So the first fleet here, we're going to select it. Right now, none of my fleets have any ships assigned to them. So what I can do is I can take my existing ships, for example, uh, my, uh, my Perseverance here, my flagship. I can click on it, and it... And there we go. Okay, so I've assigned it to the first fleet. Kind of, it's it's a little bit of an odd kind of control scheme here, um, and so I could click on the scout and then presumably drop it in there as well. Um, so now my fleet has, I guess, two ships in it. If I go out, yeah, there you go. It has two ships in it, and I can see their icons here. If I click on the button, it'll tell me I've got the first fleet selected. Show me what ships are in there. And it actually shows me an icon for the fleet here in the center of where the two ships actually are. And right now they're still doing their own thing, but I can now start to control them as a fleet by just sort of, if I right clicked right now, I could send, well, let's do it, both these guys, oops, like this. I could send them both over to Seoul, right? Or I can give them fleet commands. I can say, listen, everyone go buy, back and resupply and repair, or I can say, start attacking enemies of, uh, of the empire. Um, and that, you know, it's a pretty neat way of organizing it. What I also like about it is that if one of my scout ships, if the scout ship in the fleet was destroyed, you could requisition replacement. Right now there are two fleet or two ships in the fleet and it would tell me if there were any missing and I could just build more. And in fact, what I can do here at the first fleet is I can go into my designs and say, listen, let's, uh, let's add in a whole bunch of these scouts. If I do that. There we go. So now there's um, 11 design ships that have been assigned to this. I, I, I don't know why it leaves these little icons before. I find it a little odd. But it says, order nine new ships to be built. Perfect. That's, that's what I'm going to want. So I can click build now. And it will queue all these up for me in the... Uh, the my, my shipyards. It leaves these little artifacts behind. I think this is just things that are going to be changing moving forward. I'm very excited to see uh, them do that. Hopefully that happens. But there we go. So now my first fleet will grow over time. And if I go to to Earth and I check the construction clue, queue, in fact, it does have a ton of scouts. Well, nine Vulcan scouts. And these are armed ships that are going to be built and then automatically insert into my fleet. And they will start following the fleet around and doing all that, which I think is nifty. These icons here, one button lets me cancel a build. Uh, the two arrows let me change the priority of the items around. I can move them up and move them down. The uh, hammer... Yeah, the pair of hammers here, it lets me rush a job. Uh, I can click on that, and what it does, because there was 10 production left on that last one, it will take 10 production out of my pool here. It will also charge me 10 credits. I think it's just exactly that amount. Um, I think that's what it is. Um, so there, there's a premium to rushing these things, but it's certainly possible. Each click normally adds 10, but if I hold control, it will just try to add as much as possible to finish the job. So I could go ahead and rush all these guys by doing that sort of thing. Um, looks like they were building transports. I think when the AI automation for the freighters is on, it doesn't just set them to automate it, it also builds them when it decides that it needs them. And I'm not opposed to that. It would be nice if I, that were broken into two separate things. So now my fleet has a ton of ships, so I could go around and theoretically bully people. Of course, they're mostly tiny ships, so I actually wouldn't get to do much with them at all. So, um, so we colonized our new system, which is great. And what I could do is I could start assigning jobs. I could also, if I didn't want to micromanage this guy too much, I could, we could meet our first alien species. Hey, it's the polyps. And uh, they're cute kind of plant type people. And apparently they communicate musically because you can see him with his tentacles. He'll keep hitting these buttons. There you go. And make kind of little sounds. Maybe it's not music. Maybe it's light. I don't know. It sounds musicy. And here we get to see our first dialogue. Cloudy weather, traveler. We are polyps and we play for you a song of greetings. So every alien race has their own kind of way of speaking, and I think that's great. Uh, I like, I haven't explored the uh, diplomatic model in depth yet, because again, I haven't really played into the 
it past the, the very first part of the game just to get a, a handle on the controls. Um, they have three bars that sort of define your relationship to them, relationship to them trust, anger, and fear. So if you, uh, if you horn in on their territory, their anger will go up. If, uh, if you seem to be a threat, your fear will go up. Like if, if our military was much stronger than they, theirs were, and if we were going around blowing up other people's planets, well then these guys would start to fear me. And then there's trust as well. So obviously that's more positive. Let's see if we can negotiate a non-aggression pact early on. And we've got three tones that we can talk in. Pleading, respectful, and threatening. Uh, presumably each one of these will work better perhaps with different combinations of these meters. Threatening may also increase anger. Um, I, again, I haven't really played with that so far, so we're going to see how it goes. We can do the standard stuff. We can trade technologies and artifacts and, and all that. We'll see if we can take the non-aggression. Oh well, we would love to do this, but we just don't know you well enough yet to enter in such a large deal. And that's fine. Uh, I'm sure we'll be able to do it later on. Uh, there is a uh, there is a trait that gives you a bonus to this. You would start off with a certain amount of trust right off the bat. And, um, and so that's a racial trait. And presumably maybe technologies as well. I think there is actually one that gives you 10% more. Uh, and so you'd be able to sort of initiate these deals right away and that'd be pretty good. There's also a discuss option here, which lets us ask a few questions. If they have any grievances with us, let's you know, ask them questions about another empire. What can you tell me about your people? We hail from Palmar, where the soil is rich and the suns are warm. Your ways are so alien to us, so bizarre and confusing. We value above all else the relentless in industry of nature. To control the growth, though, to build ever more. This is what drives us. Alright. And uh, what's the device you're manipulating? Oh, this? This is a sauna board, of course. Every time I play a note, it releases a powerful blast of thin synthesized sunlight. It's good for us, but perhaps not so much for you. What else can I say? Oh, join a federation. Uh, we would be in charge, of course. Yeah, that's that's not going to be an option at this point. So what was I saying? Oh, I was going to say I, I'm going to pause the game, but apparently I get one more pop-up. So this is... Um, I've, I've quick-started just as a test. I think this is my third, maybe fourth game right now. And, and every time I got one of these events relatively early. Maybe it's because I like to build a lot of scouts. I don't know. Um, your forces have discovered a small planet in the Revoran system. It is home to a pre-warp species that appears to be in the rocket age. They are broadcasting a primitive radio signal into space, but it does not seem to have any specific target. And the radio signal is beep beep. Beep beep beep. Beep 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 beep. Beep 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 beep. Nope, that was one too many beeps. Crap. Uh, it's two, three, five, seven. And uh, if you look at option number three, it lets you encode a radio message with 11 similar pulses. Uh, they're, they're broadcasting some prime numbers here. So you can reply to them by beaming back some, the next prime number in the series to them. Uh, you can send a shuttle there to land on the planet's surface and greet them. Or you can uh, encode a ra radio message with a greeting from your leaders and just send it on. Um, one of the first run-throughs I went, I, I picked the race that was relatively had had the bonus of diplomacy i was like oh i'll send the shuttle right away and actually it worked out fine they were like yeah everything is kind of good we can't really communicate right now because we haven't figured out the whole language things but you know good on you um so i, I don't know if it's the, that's the same outcome for everyone or what we're just going to send it the uh 11 similar pulses in this particular case we'll, we'll tease them with something you broadcast the original message along with your message containing the next prime number in the sequence soon after you begin you you begging to uh, re receive a stream of data from the planet. Music, images, video recordings, mathematical formulas, the natives are attempting to communicate with you. A study of xenolinguistics will help us to understand what they are trying to say to us. So again, we can still go ahead and send the shuttle, but no, we'll just do nothing for now. Yeah, we'll, we'll leave it alone for the time being. We'll, we'll be back then. Uh, maybe we'll cue the, um, the xenolinguistics next, though. See how that goes. Um... I felt like there was more that I wanted to say on whatever screen. Oh, yes, the, uh, the new colony, right? So we colonized here. So again, I can queue up all my buildings if I want, but if I don't want to micromanage every building, I can also assign a governor to the planet. So this is a bad fertility planet. Um, it's also bad on richness. Really, it's not going to be very useful for production. Let's just set it to be a research planet. So the governor here will deal with building the appropriate buildings um, and also will assign the labor balance 
uh, as much as possible. He'll also, I believe, tweak the um, the import and export rules based on whether he needs stuff or if he's got an overflow of stuff. So hopefully, yeah, this planet won't be particularly useful for us, but hey, it was an, a planet we could expand to. Um, what's next? So the Empire screen is where we can see our list of buildings and stats, and we can sort. Yeah, we can sort. Uh, diplomacy menu. This uh, shows us who we've met so far. Shows us what our relationship is. These guys are xenophobic industrialists. They are number one in military, scientific, and number two in economic strength. Now, I don't know if that's out of the entire galaxy or just out of the people we've met, which seems... Yeah, that that's probably it. Just out of the people we've met. Uh, we can see what all their various bonuses are. Their boni, I suppose, uh, and, and mali. Um, and we can also train spies here. So if we met someone, let's go ahead and train a new spy. We've just trained uh, Bell Aldrich, who is currently defending by default. We can also give him a certain mission. Now everything costs money and takes a certain amount of time. Uh, the missions can be so you can infiltrate their base and find out. Uh, it gives you a vision of a planet, I believe. Yeah, assassinate, sabotage, steal tech, robbery, and incite rebels. Now all these missions down here are things that you do against someone else. And there's a certain chance of success and chance of failure. If they succeed in a mission, they can level up and become better. Now, what you can also do to make it a little bit safer is you can level them up yourself by just sending them on an agent training mission. It's not against anyone. It shouldn't piss anyone off. Uh, they are kind of away during this time, so they're not actually defending. So I don't know, maybe we want a second spy and then we can alternate them. Uh, but hopefully they will succeed in their training and then they will come back and be slightly higher. And that'll be nice. So apparently we got Solo Aldrich. Are they all going to be Aldrichs? No, Ryan Boyd. And I just spent a ton of money on spies, but I don't know. In these games, I always get spied on. Um, and that's that. There's the main menu. I think we went through most of the screens. So uh, I suppose what we'll do is we'll fast forward a little bit more and talk about that. Did I? Whoa. We met someone else. The Kolrothi Shogunate. The Space Bears. Oh my god, his ear wiggles. It's really, really adorable. Um... In the spring rains, pond and river become one, bloodied by our foes. So these guys speak in haikus. Heed well our warrior poets, human, and anger not the mighty Kulrathi. All right. How did we, um... Oh, this is not us. The problem is we changed our color. So, uh... <laughs> The um, the polyps are are green, kind of a darker green. So that's that's going to be really confusing. I should have just left the default color. Wow, I uh, hadn't really thought about that. I was going to say how I didn't say to expand to all these places. But speaking of expanding, um, Kronos. Yeah, let's grab you. Where else we got? And again, it doesn't keep this list, and it doesn't show you where you've already sent a colony ship to, which. I find a little bit annoying. Let's hide everything that's already owned. Um, relatively fertile over here. Not huge population, but we could turn this into a farming colony. That wouldn't be too bad. This galaxy is filled with danger, human. We see your strength. Join us in pledging a mutual pact of non-aggression. Let us move forward as friends. Yeah, let's totally do that. So I like that they're not all complete dicks. Um, they do offer you... Uh, Trade packs, non-aggression packs, they, they see if you want to trade technologies pretty often, all kinds of things. Oh, failed the training, which is unfortunate. Oh, Aranar's climate has improved. Yeah, but that's still a place with all the anomalies, right? No uh, hyperspace flux anymore. We do have a pretty, like, reasonable fleet going on. Uh, although, in practice, what I should be doing with these ships is uh, sending these guys to explore but you have to do it kind of individually. You can't do it on a fleet level. And really, I shouldn't... I don't think I should have them in fleets like this at this time. But what the hell, right? Um, Empire. People are building colony ships, which is fine. I actually wouldn't mind another set of uh, scout ships. And we can rush that. Just to see around. I like how the ships leave little trails behind. I think they fade over time to show like the areas where you've like recently kind of seen and looked but I'm not sure maybe they just stick around and the and the world gets full of contrails uh, these areas will also start to join up as the influences grow well you can see it here and possibly as the ships go back and forth I'm not sure what the uh, the process is for actually connecting these dots now these are my oh that's a colony ship but these are transports so right now they're going back to earth this one's to pick up colonists 
uh, this pickup production, pickup colonists, pickup production. They'll also pick up food and things like that, um, and they will help the colonies grow, which is pretty handy. You humans are so strange looking. How can we trust something without roots? Uh, that is a rhetorical question. We'll definitely trust you if you give us a gift. How about heavy fighter hull? You know, these guys are right next door. I have a feeling that we're probably going to be competing for space regardless, so I don't think that making friends with them is a good long-term prospect, plus especially with giving them um, military technology. So we'll reject. That will make them angry. So maybe we'll have to prepare for war. What do we have queued up? We've got the Xeno Linguistics. Um... We've got the heavy fighter hull, which is good, so I guess the next thing to do will actually be we need armor theory so that we can actually have plating on the outside of our ship, because that's not an option right now. And I suppose we could start researching like more and different weapons. Um, you know, start packing some missiles or something like that. So let's let's fast forward here. What do we got? Oh yes, we unlocked that. Unlock some anomalies. We met uh, the Cthulians, the uh, Riley Devoted. Uh, how about a non-aggression pact? Yeah, not yet. Maybe later. So the problem in this game, of course, is I've done tons of things in completely unoptimal ways because I was just trying to show things off. Uh, so I'm probably going to get destroyed. Oh, the Opterists. I think they're really kind of interesting looking. Um, so far, they've been kind of dickish to me. I don't know if that's something that we can see here. Diplomacy modifier, minus 25%. So they're not they're not terribly friendly. We are the worst in the galaxy in terms of military strength. So apparently these guys really build up their military a lot. Um, I guess we have our heavy hulls now. We should probably do something about that, right? So you can see the difference between our small shuttle fighter size and the larger hunter fighter size. That is a world of difference. Let's um let's let's start decking ourselves out, I suppose. Um we can start with some engines. There are oh, fire engines. So there's tons of stats and I mean you'd have to really like look and pay attention to all these things. The interesting thing here Oh, well, that's interesting. These fighter engines have no warp capability whatsoever. So this is the sort of engine that you stick on something that needs to have a fighter carrier to escort it around, or maybe just local system defense. So we want to use either small engines or the small warp engines. And the difference between the two is the small warp engines go much faster at warp. They're probably really good for scouts uh, and perhaps transport ships. I don't know. Uh, and But the small engines have much better just general general thrust and also turn ratio. So we're going to want to use those for ships that are actually going to go into combat. So we've got that selected. We can put them in all the E spots. So I guess we'll just paint down four of those. Try to get as many in as possible. Great. Um, we need a bridge or cockpit or CIC. We need something to provide some sort of command. So we'll give a, a cockpit to the ship. I suppose we'll put it like right on the inside so it's relatively safe. Um... That's good. And it does need every single slot filled. Now, that doesn't mean it has to be filled with something real, because you, as long as uh, you can fill it with these power conduits, which are, like, cheaper, and they can fit everywhere, and you can just sort of draw them down, and they will just transfer power different places and allow you to fill all the empty slots if you want to. So we've got engines. Um... Oh, right, that was the engine. I don't want that. I want. We need probably a power plant. So there's the medium power plant, which is... Uh, a two by two square and then there's a smaller nuclear reactor which is much smaller um, this is heavier but also generates a lot more power I'm not sure how much we need for this ship like that's that's the thing I haven't really explored um, you know what the things are and then the fuel uh, the cells control like how far you can go on a charge so let's give them a medium sized one power capacity is 1500 that might be like way more than is necessary actually Let's go with maybe two small fuel cells. And then weapons. Well, we've got bombs. I, I don't know if we're going to be bombing planets exactly. Uh, but ballistic cannon sounds pretty good. So we've got the flak turrets, which are pretty large. Um, they're mounted on swivel platforms for 90 degree uh, field of fire. They fire explosive shells with moderate damage radiance, uh, radius, but the projectiles are somewhat slow and ill-suited for tracking swift targets. Furthermore, this weapon requires ordnance to fire, so you need ammo for that. Um, so I don't think that the flak turret is a good idea against 
um, trying to dogfight with other fighters. Even though flak sort of implies maybe that. I guess it's the scatter flak is like better. It's a three round spread. Oh, it's huge though. I think it's a three by three, so that's not going to work at all. Um, the other thing we can do is turn on arcs. So we can actually see the firing arcs, I believe. There we go. So, you know, we can go with something like that. There's actually only the forward one can fit. And then I guess we can mount a series of... These PD cannons, right? I don't know if you can rotate these at all. Oh, it's sort of the AI. The ship will make head-on attack runs. Um, the ship will rotate so that forward firing weapons are facing its target. Um, in a fleet, it will attempt to maintain formation. If not, the ship will maneuver to within maximum weapon range. Will attempt to hold position and not engage. Will maneuver to keep its target on the port side. Will maneuver to keep it on the starboard side. Will avoid engaging in combat. Good for scouts and non-combat ships. Oh, how about that? So, I guess this ship is probably going to make attack runs. So, I don't know. There's no stat here for how much power it takes, you know, while it's firing everything. I, I feel like it's not going to pull this off. Damage range, speed... Oh, right, these fire ordnance anyway. They're not laser cannons, so maybe it's not an issue. What else we got? We got defense. Now, this is armor, but this is all internal armor. So, it's not it's not real armor, this ship. These are small fighters. It doesn't really matter. I'm not convinced we want to weigh them down with that anyway. Ah, oh, we need ordnance storage, though. Let's give them a good pile of this. And then, maybe we'll just drop... This is really the first ship I've designed, so I'm probably doing it all wrong. But we'll drop some power conduits in in all of the empty spots, just to shuttle the power around. And we'll see how that goes. Because I have no idea. Just out of curiosity, um, if I were to remove this and drop a point defense cannon on the back, I feel like there should be a way to rotate these. Click and drag? No. I mean, I guess I could just drop, like, why not fill every slot with it? I don't know. Let's do that and see what happens. Um, save as. We're going to save it as the, um, the stupid lots of guns. All right. So we've done that. Let's go to our Empire screen, let's go to Earth, and let's queue up some stupid lots of guns. It's not even as expensive as a Flak Hunter. Probably because I didn't fill up every actual slot. Um, no, screw you, I'm not giving you my ship technology. So we're going to build our first super stupid lots of guns here in a sec. Is that it? Yes. Military analysis of human fleets suggests critical weakness, probability of target humans for consumption increasing. Yeah, so they do warn you when things are not great. So let's um, let's assume direct control of this guy. Maneuver around. He doesn't... Oh, wow, the power drains instantly on this guy. Like, I'm not doing anything and his power is draining. That's a bad sign. Whoa! All right, so... The point defense thing, I mean, it's a short range thing primarily. We can watch the ordnance just drop like crazy. Yes, we're recharging because we're in friendly territory, I believe, is what's happening. We're close enough that we're being refueled. Um, but our power is going right down. So, that didn't work out. <laughs> Load, fighter, stupid lots of guns load. So we clearly need more um, more power plant. More nuclear reactors everywhere. How come you don't have a connection?
I'm actually really confused. You need the power conduits to shuttle things around? Well, how come this one has power? Oh, they have a range, don't they? That's how they work. Oh! No, that doesn't work. That does. Okay, so I mean, there's a little bit more to it, that's for sure. So, let's uh, resave this. Overwrite. So you here are going to retrofit to... No. I don't know, I guess I can't, because it's got the same name, I should have called it the Mark II. I'm just going to go and do that now. Um, oh, trade agreement. Yeah, sure, that sounds great. I'm going to DQ these just in case, and then... re it. Ah, much more expensive now. Because of all the nuclear, or the... Yeah. The reactors. So, is this my new one? No, that's the one that's going back. This is my new one. So let's um, let's assume control. Start flying off. All right, we're no longer going negative anymore. Start firing the gun. Oh, we probably still need more ordnance though, because we apparently can't fire our guns very long without actually running out of ammo completely. I'm not even convinced that it's going to be maneuverable, maneuverable enough to actually shoot anything, which is a shame. Anyway, at this point, I think this is going to bring us to the end of the recording. I, I, this is not, we're not playing the game. This is a first impressions. Let's, tr let's try. Uh, when the game comes out, there's a possibility we might do a full let's play, but we already have a pretty full schedule. And if anything else, if we're going to play some 4X games, there's a few others I want to try. But I, I do like the, uh, the shooting of the flat cannons, though, or the point defense Vulcans. Your armor looks thin. Yeah, piss off. I don't want to talk to you. We'll see. Anyway, I think the game has great potential. As I said, it is available now on Steam. If you purchase it now, you will get into the beta and you will get to play this game as is. Um, I really think it's got a lot of potential. And, I, you know, no one's going to complain about having more 4X games on the market. So, hopefully everything works out awesome for it. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.